Hello everybody and welcome back to Anxiety Chats. You may be able to tell by my voice that I had COVID last week. I am now, don't have COVID anymore, but I do have some lingering symptoms. And when I had COVID, I did make a video actually, so you can go back and watch that if you'd like to. Um, but I, God, I just had so much reflection because I was in the house obviously for a week. Um, in Scotland you don't actually have to isolate but I decided to isolate so that I didn't pass it on to anybody and I just really got to thinking about like generally lockdown and isolation and the combination of that and having agoraphobia and um, if you don't know what agoraphobia is it's described as a fear of open spaces and um, which is not something I relate to I don't feel like that's how I would describe agoraphobia um, but I've ag had agoraphobia since I was about 18 um, and basically it means that I really find it difficult to leave the flat sometimes um, my radius of what feels safe to me is definitely more close than most people's um, for me uh, obviously that is quite similar to what a lot of us have experienced over the past few years with Covid um, I know that for a long time where I was anyway, it was complete lockdown and you weren't allowed to see anybody at all. Um, and I've seen quite a lot of like articles online and stuff like that comparing lockdown and agoraphobia and like we're just curious I guess about um, those two things and how they obviously are similar in terms of um, if you have agoraphobia you often find it difficult to leave the house and obviously with lockdown nobody was able to leave their house. Um, and now in a lot of the world, I don't know like exactly where you're from, I don't know if it's still that you have to isolate if you have COVID. Um, most people I think do isolate when they have COVID, I'm not 100% sure um, about different parts of the world, but it's such an interesting topic to me because a little bit about myagraphobia, if you don't know anything about my agoraphobia journey, um, I started to, I got my first panic attack when I was 10 um, and then my anxiety was up and down um, when I was about 18. I was in college, I was studying social sciences and every single day that I went to college felt horrific. I felt physically sick. From the second I went into the building, I would sweat, I would feel ill, I wouldn't be able to learn anything because I just, all I could think about was the fact that I just wanted to be home. Um, and just, it's so difficult to describe to people because I imagine most people, when they're in work, when they're in the office, when they're at college or school, they're like, I'd rather be at home. But that's not what it's like. It's, it's like your body is, in, well, it's, it is. Your body's in fight or flight. Your body is telling you, you are in extreme danger. You need to get out right now. So if you're sitting in a classroom experiencing that physical anxiety, and all the thoughts of you need to run, you need to run. You can't sit and learn, you know? Um, so I tried really hard to stay in college, but even on like lunch breaks and stuff, I was just sitting there unable to eat because I was just like, I felt so horrific. It was like I had COVID almost. Like that's how it felt in my body. It was just horrible. And so I left college and then when I left college, I actually didn't leave the house at all for three months. And every time I tried to, it was just, unbelievable terror in my body it was horrific and now I still have agoraphobia I struggle to go certain places like I find it difficult unless I'm with somebody that's very very safe to go like more than half an hour away in the car I can't really travel um, it's very difficult and it's interesting that obviously a lot of us in fact pretty much everybody has experienced that same thing in a way we've all experienced you can't go out because of COVID. You don't want to pass it on, you don't want to pick it up, you can't be near people. So we all experience on a different level, depending on where you're from, um, staying at home more, wearing masks, um, not being able to travel, not being able to go on holiday, all those kinds of things. So in a way we've all experienced that, but the comparison to me is very interesting because I feel like I went through that COVID lockdown on my own for, a long time and I still feel like that and while the world has gone back to normal in a lot of ways for a lot of people I know there's still some people that are I mean compromised or um, 
that might not be able to feel comfortable going out still with COVID, which I I can't experience because I've not experienced that kind of thing. Um, there are still people with severe agoraphobia that cannot leave their house. It's like they're in a permanent lockdown. So that frustration and loneliness and anxiety that you might have felt if you're somebody that's never experienced agoraphobia, that you might have felt when you were in lockdown. A lot of people with agoraphobia or other kinds of anxiety disorders experience that the same thing every single day. And the difference between COVID isolation and lockdown and agoraphobia is with agoraphobia and severe anxiety, you have absolutely no idea when it's gonna end. It might never end. I remember feeling like, and in fact, even when I still nowadays get like really bad days with anxiety, I think like, is this it? Like, am I just gonna feel like this for the rest of my life? And there's not really a way to rationalize it. There's no facts. With COVID, we had scientists, we had people from all over the world experiencing the same thing. And we knew that there was going to be vaccines at some point. We knew that people were going to keep getting COVID and then eventually it wouldn't be as strong an illness, obviously I am not a scientist. You might not know that about me, but I am not a scientist. And so I don't know the exact science and the ins and outs of it, but we knew that COVID wasn't gonna be forever. Um, with mental health problems, we don't know that. We, you know, for me, I've, like I said, I had my first panic attack at 10, I'm now 26, and I still struggle with anxiety every single day. Um, and the reason I wanted to make this video was to create some awareness for people that um, I, I just feel like when we're in that time of lockdown and um, people weren't able to leave their houses, people were offering like beautiful things to each other. Like when I had COVID recently, I had so many people offering to go to the shop for me, um, so many people saying, oh, I hope you get better soon. And it was really lovely. And it, it's nobody's fault at all. And there's not like, you know, I don't, it's really difficult making this video in some ways because it's not like I'm saying, you know, people need to do better or anything like that. Everyone tries their best, but I just wish there was more kindness and love and nurturing towards people that are going through a difficult time with their mental health. And I know we all feel that way, but it's like, what can we do about it? But I just kind of wanted to make this video one, to kind of create some awareness and, um, hopefully remind us all to show each other more love and to do more if we're able to, to help other people. And two, if you're somebody that has or does struggle with severe anxiety or agoraphobia or other reasons why you struggle leaving the house, um, I totally am with you and I'm so sorry that you're going through that and I wish all of you were my next door neighbours and I could go to the shop for all of you and I could, um, I remember when I was really agoraphobic, my friends, I didn't see them, but they would come to my doorstep of my parents' house and we would just sit there for hours and talk and they would tell me all of the stuff that's been going on and who's going out with who and who's broken up and all of these different things. Like that would talk just like for hours and hours about random stuff that was happening in the world that I wasn't a part of. I wasn't a part of the world anymore. Every day was waking up, trying my best not to have a panic attack not even wanting to get dressed in case it like exhausted me too much and I had a panic attack like it was brutal and I'm very lucky and happy that I'm now in a place with my agoraphobia that I can function most of the time I can't like go out of my little bubble my little however many, many mile radius one I think <laughs> but I can live a somewhat fulfilling and um, safe life where I feel safe um, and so yeah I just wanted to quickly remind us all that we're all still struggling in some way I think every single one of us really has our stuff and it's really nice to be able to talk about it and help each other when we can um, and I wanted to send love to all of you that might be experiencing something difficult just now I also wanted to ask if any of you miss anything about lockdown, like there's actually a lot of things that I miss about lockdown. By the way, my plant, this is a prayer plant and it just sometimes has a mind of its own and it goes up and then down. That gave me a bit of a fright you might have seen. <laughs> I was like, 
what was beside me but it's just that guy um yeah i'd love to know what you miss about lockdown it's actually a lot of stuff that i miss about lockdown um i miss kind of being able to be a bit more free with our time being able to um really listen to your body and get enough sleep and like cook nice meals for yourself having the time to like look after yourself was really nice and I'm self-employed so I still have to, can create time when I need it um but yeah there was just something really magical about that time and I'd like to know if you felt the same maybe you absolutely hated lockdown um I would like to know and thank you very much for watching today's video I will see you very soon with a new video bye